talking about a really important issue today. We are here at PG Counseling and Family Support Services and joining us is the founder, uh, Stephanie. And Stephanie, we're going to start by talking about divorce and kids and how it can impact both. But let's start off with you've decided to get a divorce. Yeah. Now what? What does this look like mm -hmm. when two people have sat down and made that decision? It's a really big question. Is There's a lot of things to consider. And I think the number one thing is not to rush it and to recognize that you have to take some time to explore what options you have as to how you want to go about this. So mm -hmm. number one thing that people think of is we've got a lawyer up, we're going to be in court, we're going to be battling each other. That's no longer how a lot of couples go about this. Mm -hmm. is there's actually a really small percentage that we would say are high conflict. There's a lot of other options to explore now, like mediation. There's something called collaborative law. Start by having some conversations about what you want mm -hmm. this to look like mm -hmm. and what some of your end goals are. Yeah, I remember when I got divorced, we went to a mediator just because we didn't know what to do. Right. We didn't need to lawyer up. It wasn't a high conflict. And we just needed to get kind of instructions on how to go about getting a divorce. Absolutely. There's a lot of things to consider that you have to just find somebody that you feel like you can trust that's yeah. going to be very neutral, yeah. who's able to support, again, what your goals are. So for me as a social worker, I work with families around their parenting plans. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people know, here's kind of what we want to do, but what makes sense? Help me understand what my kids need. Yeah. Um, and others, there's more financial questions. So yeah. there's actually a lot of financial professionals that specialize in divorce. Yeah. Maybe you're getting one of those people that come in and help you understand your rights, uh, your expectations, mm -hmm. what your duties are, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of pieces to go through. So getting some of those support pieces in place can be incredibly helpful. Yeah, and the logistics of what you yes. have to do in kind of what order and how you have to go about, you know, telling people or not telling people and kind of, you know, family stuff. Yes. And I think what a lot of people, you know, as you said, you've decided to separate. Now, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, in taking the time to really consider when are we ready to start talking to people about it? You know, who do we want to share this with? When are we going to talk to our kids about it? They don't, like I said before, have to be rushed. Mm -hmm. Is This is such a personal, really traumatic. I mean, it's one of the top five stressful events you can go through in your life. Yeah. So recognizing that it's okay to do this on your own terms and process it as you go and share as you're ready to share. Because even though it happens to so many families, like I said, it is still so stressful and traumatic mm -hmm. that it doesn't, it doesn't have to be to meet other people's expectations yeah, of you, it's, right? It's so personal. It is so personal. Yeah, yes. You really need to focus on you and then everybody else. Absolutely. Okay. Talking to your kids about divorce. We're going to touch on that subject in just a few moments, but for now, I'm going to send things back to the studio. Back here at Peachy Counseling with Stephanie and Kids First Co-Parenting. I know this is a workshop you have here, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But first, how do you tell your kids that you're getting a divorce or separating, and when is a good time? The number one thing that I ask parents to do is to talk to kids together. Mm -hmm. So even though there may be a million reasons why these parents aren't getting along, they want to live apart from each other, this is the time to come together and be a united friend and tell your children together. It sets the tone for your kids, hopefully to see you as you know, still one parenting unit who's mm -hmm. working together to support them. So it's a conversation that you're sitting down at a time that you are available to answer questions, whether your kids are young or older. Doing this together can have a huge impact and allowing them to ask questions that they have, to let them know that this is a decision that you've made together. Mm -hmm. Do not tell your children the whys. No. Children do not need to be aware of this. And I have parents that will say, Well, they well, ask why. They do ask why, they yes. Ask come together and make a decision about what the answer to that is going to be. Mm -hmm. Whether it be infidelity, whether it be you know financial issues, children don't need to know that because when you're sharing that, what you're saying is it's this parent's fault. Yeah, there's, there's blame. There's, there's blame, blame being given. And that's something that I feel like you really have to try and avoid no matter how much devastation or hurt is on either side you have to still be one unit. Like you gotta be you against them. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Always, because yes. I've learned the hard way that sometimes mm -hmm. if little things slip in, it needs to be a united front. It does, yeah. and I think there's that instinct for parents. They Parents wanna be liked like everybody else, right? Totally. We want our children to like us. Yeah. So it's being very mindful of you know how you're saying things, if it's the size, the glances, the anything, but sharing. Mm -hmm. Kids pick up on these things. They do. 
sharing, you know, we've made this decision because we think it's best for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's sufficient. We think we're, we will all be happier if we go through this. Yeah. That said, don't expect to do it in a way that your children will be happy about Yeah, it. they're not going to be like, really? Okay, yes. that's great. Because I don't think many kids would react like that. Not at, at all. all. No. And a lot of parents come to us for counseling services to talk about how do I support my kids through this. Yeah. And one of the things we often say is let them have their feelings. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll not do this in a way that they'll, like you said, be happy. Yeah. They're going to be sad. And that's okay. It's, even if you're the parent who's chosen this, mm -hmm. you're probably sad. Well, you're sad when you see them sad. Yeah. Yes. Right. You know that you've made the right decision. You know that this is the best for them in the long run. But mm -hmm. to see them crushed crushes you. Now, when it comes to co-parenting, this mm -hmm. is a workshop you offer here. Yeah. So this is a workshop I developed with a colleague uh, who also works in separation divorce. And it's available online. So it's at your own pace. We previously were doing them live, but mm -hmm. everybody's so busy, especially yeah. when you're going through a separation. So we thought, let's get it online. It's You can do it at your own pace. Um, and it's offered in a way that's a little more financially um, available for some families Amazing. as opposed to multiple sessions. Okay. And it's the basics of how to be a really good co-parent. Okay, contact at thinkkidsfirst.ca. Coming up, we're gonna continue our discussion with Stephanie all about kids and divorce and separation and family matters. Back to the studio. Back with Stephanie here at Peachy Counseling and Family Support. One thing we wanna talk about is relationships. I'm so lucky, my ex-husband and I have a very good relationship, we're very good at co-parenting, but sometimes the pieces don't fall like that. And it's very difficult to get both sides to agree. What do you do in those types of situations? How can you contribute and to make it a good family unit? Because really, it is just about the kids. It is, and you're right, some people forget about that. I mean, you and your ex-husband are clearly working very hard at keeping your children at the forefront. Totally. There's some other parents I think get lost in things, whether it be finances or you know what they feel that they are entitled to, and the emotion, kids, anger, so much. Yes, yeah. kids get lost in the mix there. Yeah. So it is really tough. There's I talk to people about my services being a spectrum. So there's the families that can come together and work on a really good parenting plan which is just that, a plan mm -hmm. for parenting your children um, that can do this together. And I really encourage families to do that because you're the experts on your kids, yep. right? Nobody else should be making decisions. Totally. That said, when families can't do that, we do sometimes have to step up in terms of uh, what the services are involved and how directive they are. Mm -hmm. So there is space for lawyers. Um, you know, I, I encourage a lot of families to explore other options, but there's some families that yeah. need that advocacy. Yep court is there for a reason and we need to have people coming in and making decisions mm -hmm. um, and there's services involved with social workers that can help create those parenting plans when parents clearly can't do them together so something like a parenting plan assessment um, th th not all families need them but it's where somebody like myself an assessor can come in and say i'm going to collect all the information i'm going to get to know your family and i'm going to recommend to the court mm -hmm. or at least to your lawyers but generally to the court here's a plan that i think would work well for this family and the parents are then obligated to follow it. And then that way, they're not feeling resentment towards each other of making those decisions, being like, well, it was your idea to do this, or it was your idea to have the kids on Wednesday when really I should have them because I've got to take them to soccer and this and that. Like there is so much mm -hmm. nitty gritty um, back and forth that happens, even when you get yes. along. Yes. Even when you're co-parenting really, really well, there's yeah. still so much to be done. And well, you've got to pick them up. And are you making the lunches or am I taking them to this and birthday yes. parties? And, like there is just so much involved that if yeah. you are poor at communicating with each other, it's game over. Oh yeah. yeah. And I say to parents all the time, you're not partners anymore. So you have to be able to let that go. Mm -hmm. But your parent hats have to stay on. Yeah. So you have to, despite everything that you're going through, you have to find a way to figure out how to have some type of relationship mm -hmm. that serves your children because they mm -hmm. have to be the mm -hmm. number one here. Mm -hmm. They deserve to have parents that can work together and say hello to each other and be at the same soccer game. Yeah. But you're right, there are there are times that parents are unable to do that. Yeah. So they need some direction of here's what you're going to do because it's best for your kids. Mm -hmm. And the hope is that they'll come around to understanding the yeah. why. That's Fing part of my job. Fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, more with Stephanie coming up. There's lots more to come on Morning Live. The new normal, I know that's kind of a coined phrase, people have been talking about that in the last couple of years, but that's really 
what it comes down to when you have finally made the decision, you've gone through with the separation, you've gone through with the divorce, what does it look like for you? And more importantly, what does it look like for the kids? Yeah, that's a great question. So many people, the services are that we offer about the build up and getting to that point. Mm -hmm. And then I sort of picture it like you've gotten to the top of the hill. What does it look like coming yeah, down like the you're other each side? In your separate houses and the kids are going yes. back and forth on the schedule that you've planned, but how does it really look? Yes, I think this is where some therapeutic support can be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Through the divorce is very helpful for sure, but afterwards is, you know, how how am I settling into this? How am I, as an adult, doing when my children are with my co-parent? Mm -hmm. What do I do with my time? Um, I have ideas, they can call me. <laughs> <laughs> you learn to fill the time though, right? Yeah, you do. I have a lot of parents you usually do. that say like, who am I if I'm not a parent 24 hours a day? Yeah. Um, kids feeling really sorry for one parent. I'm away from you. You must mm -hmm. be upset. Mm -hmm. Finding your new normal, I think, as an adult and a parent is really helpful because you want your kids to see you thriving. Yeah. But you want to find out who you are again outside of this relationship yeah. and outside of always being a parent. So that new normal for an adult can be really important. Mm -hmm. who, what, who, how do I want to spend my time? Yeah. What hobbies can I maybe take yeah. up? And it's not saying I'm happy I don't have my kids because parents have a lot of guilt around that. Totally. But I tell don't me have more. Them. Yeah. <laughs> But recognizing, hopefully, they're having a great time with the other parent. Yeah. You are an individual who deserves to enjoy that time and yeah. not just spend it cooking or cleaning or getting ready for the kids to Doing come back. Doing something else for the kids. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Your whole person. So how can you spend that time? Okay. And then for the kids, how do you support those transitions, mm -hmm. right? How do you respect that they might have some difficulty going between the homes and supporting them with it instead of expecting them to just fall in line with what this parenting plan is yep. and be okay with everything. There's mm -hmm. going to be bumps along the road mm -hmm. and these things always have to be revised, reviewed and consider how is this actually working for my family. Mm -hmm. I find sometimes my kids, they'll be because we're so easy going with our custody arrangement mm -hmm. that sometimes they're like, well, wait, didn't I just, wasn't I just a daddy's that, did my not am I here like am I sleeping here like they kind of yeah. because we're so good at like oh I've got an event that night do you mind taking the kids or you know can they stay at your place for two nights and then I'll take them back on Sunday or whatever oh, it is so nice. they kind of get confused in the whole thing yes. but I think it's still better that way to to have that kind of openness yeah, if you can manage that, I mm -hmm. think that's fabulous. With a lot of families, I create really detailed parenting plans. I say to parents, it's like a playbook. Mm -hmm. You know what you have to do. That said, my language that I always plug in is unless otherwise agreed upon. Yeah. If you can have that flexibility, absolutely that benefits you as individuals, your kids in knowing my parents can work together. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to be cared for um, and, and making decisions, you know, Outside of the parenting plan, I think if both parents can manage that, supports mm -hmm. the kids really well. Some families can't, though. No. And the parenting okay. plan, yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, and that's, and that's why okay. there's the plan in place to yeah. make sure we know where the kids are going on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Right? We know who's trick-or-treating this year. Yeah, for sure. We have it written down. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie, for having us here today. We've learned a lot. You've been able to really explain it and kind of dumb mm -hmm. it down for people because it is very overwhelming and it can be a very intimidating process. If people want to reach you, where can they do it? Yeah. So our website's a really good place to go. It's peachycounseling.ca. Uh, follow us on Instagram. It's at peachycounseling. We are pretty quick to respond to emails. So even awesome. feel free to check in, ask a question if you have it. We can, if we're not the right service, we'll try to guide you where to go. Amazing. Thanks again.